So I'm going to go ahead and take a question here. So it says installed five ton Gree heat pumps last year. Had trouble with unit, was told to unhook D from units. Have to go back, uh, reset the units by pulling the indoor disconnect. No code, just shuts down. Is there anything else to look at? Check static pressures, et cetera. We had, uh, well, the first thing I'll tell you is um, if you haven't already, go ahead and reach out to our tech support. It's 888-850-7928. That's the first thing I would do. Um, it's going to be quite a bit of information that they're going to have to have in order to troubleshoot this. Um, you know, given that amount of information, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not because I'm not. I've got to believe he's talking about a flex. The D terminal going to the outdoor unit doesn't do anything other than let the indoor unit know it's in default. I don't know how that would have anything to do with the function of the outdoor unit. So if you have the D connected, you know that's the between indoor and out. All right. When you have the D connected, when the unit goes into defrost, the outdoor unit's letting the indoor unit know that it's going into defrost. Correct. And then right. if it has electric heat in there, it will turn on the electric heat. Okay. If it doesn't have electric heat, it will shut the blower down during defrost, provided how it's hooked up. Provided how it's hooked up. So if you don't have electric heat, so there's two different options that we could do defrost, right? I would contend that the best way to do that is to connect D up so that the blower shuts down. You're talking about two minutes on average as far as the max go. The absolute maximum that you can run in defrost is three minutes. If if your customer is getting cold within three minutes, I know you probably don't sell insulation. Well, and they will feel like they're getting cold if the blower is just sitting there running because the coil is right. in cool mode. But if we get a blow, if we don't have electric heat in there and we just shut the fan down, that's fine. Now. Right. But if you have electric heat, yeah, if you have the you electric heat, don't run the D connected. If there's no, there's a couple of different ways we can wire it. We can leave the D yeah. connected, and it'll shut the blower down unless it has a call from auxiliary heat. Then it keep, then it turns on the electric heat. The electric heat will stay on. Right. If it don't have a call for electric heat, it shuts the blower down. Or you can wire it just like a conventional heat pump, the way we've always done it. Without the outdoor unit goes into defrost. It sends a signal inside and turns on the electric heat. Right. Um, from an efficiency standpoint, I'll say if you've sold them a flex based on efficiency, try to get all the efficiency you can out of it. Uh, I would say shut down the blower. Don't I have agree. the electric heat on come on just for it to run in defrost for a little while. Um, yep. You know, depending on the size of the heat kit, at, at best you can overcome the fact that it's running and cooling for, you know, what effectively is like a minute. You got the electric heat coming on almost for no reason at that point. Uh, but you know, different people are accustomed to different things. If you want to, if you want to wire it that way, you can. I said he's, but there seems like there's more to his question there, and I think yeah, it's kind of he's going to be wise to call it that. Right, which I mean does bring up a point. You know, um, our our tech support guys get paid uh, to listen to you. So if you'd like to go ahead and provide as many details as you as you can about the job when you call in, that's always a good thing. Uh, well, I always stress model and serial number, both the indoor and the outdoor unit, because you know I it just it, it amazes me how we get a voicemail message that's got a thirty second recording of explaining to us what equipment they have, when if they just leave the model and serial number, we'll know exactly what it is. So model and serial number is hugely important in the call test. Yeah, yeah. And that was uh, our last episode where uh, Daniel wanted to, needed to stay heated about the models and serial numbers. So I guess Greg's turn is to stay heated about the models and serial numbers too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, I know that uh, in my past when I was doing tech support, you know, like, hey, I was working on a mini split. It's not running, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what what kind is it? I don't know. It's one of those white ones. Well, we've got you know, quite a few versions of that. So, <laughs> you know, we got, we got the white ones on Multipro. We got the white ones on VRF. We got the white ones on, you know, Levo and Vario and Sapphire. So it's, you know, it can definitely point you in the right direction to play right out of the gate.